Welcome to this episode of Gen Z's Words. Thank you so much, Enoch. And as a Gen Zer and um, aspiring social media influencer, I'm more than happy to share my stories of China and Belarus here. Um, so last year was a big year between exactly. the two countries, right? The two countries celebrated uh, the 30 years of official diplomatic relations. As a youth representative, you spoke and you hosted events. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what happened last year and what was some of the most memorable moments for you? It was a very big official event organized by All China Youth Federation and the Embassy of the Republic of Belarus to China. So I was very honored to be a host in Chinese and Russian. I also made a short video representing my life here and my experience in China as a Sino-Belarusian youth bridge, kind of, and to share it about my experience of becoming a Chinese language champion for my country, right? So I shared some of the stories and for me a big highlight of this event was that a lot of uh, Belarusian youth and Chinese youth took part in an online seminar, then held an online forum, and for this event they shared the fruitful results of this cooperation. By my example, uh, I inspired a lot of my younger fellows to study Chinese, to apply for Chinese institution, for Confucius Institute for scholarships to do their undergraduate and master's degree in China. Uh, talking about One Belt, One Road, it actually pushed this education exchanges because uh, we had a lot of opportunities to apply to, to study in China with One Belt, One Road scholarship. Chinese language faculties have been opened all around my country in the cities of Grodno, Brest, Minsk, Vitebsk, so all over my country. Belarusian language faculty were also launched in China. When you study international politics, one of the very important news is that Belarus will become an official member of SCO. Yes. The official process of Belarus joining SCO as an official member has been launched. Uh, as we have known that before Belarus was more focused on countries like Russia and our neighbors from the European Union. But now in this time of global crisis, uh, our country is realizing that we need to use the potential and start building ties with other regions and connect, connect better with Eurasia, with China, with other countries that, you know, we need to connect together. And this means a lot for our youth. SCO University is the biggest project that is supposed to connect youth from our countries and more, for example, youth from Belarus could study in Kazakhstan or in China without barriers. That's the objective of this initiative. So I hope that in 10 years we can see this SCO University and we can see students from all the regions studying in all this region without barriers. Like, And I think that would be great for Belarus. We could see way more students that we have right now in China and that would mean that more students could study Chinese language education, could bring the Chinese experience back to my country. It marks the 10th year of the um, Belt and Road Initiative officially proposed mm -hmm. since in 2013. Exactly. I wonder, um, are youth in Belarus interested in such an initiative? And looking ahead, what do you think youth can be better engaged in such an initiative in the region? If you ask the youth right now about uh, BRI and SEO, I think a lot of my friends in Belarus already have an idea of what that is. Uh, I think that most of the youth in Belarus support this initiative for the reason that they realized this is going to bring actual benefits for them. Mm -hmm. uh, One Belt, One Road and SEO created thousands of job opportunities for youth in Belarus. For example, the biggest project for China in Belarus, Great Stone, China Belarus Industrial Park, has so many companies from China, US and Russia, like Huawei, ZTE, uh, Chinese uh, traditional medicine enterprises, offering jobs for specialists in, Chinese, in economics, Chinese language, translation, finance, chemical engineering, etc. So this means direct jobs for Belarusian people. Who would be against this initiative, right? Uh, Chinese Putonghua, of course, is one <laughs> of the more difficult languages to learn in the world. I remember when I started learning Chinese, we had around 15 people in my class, but to the end of the semester, we just had six. So you really have to be persistent and consistent. It's my ninth year studying Chinese, <laughs> and I'm about to take HSK 9, HSK 8 to 9 this year, wow. in order to be able to become an official translator from Chinese to English. But this story has a very um, interesting, peculiar beginning. My parents were the ones who encouraged me to learn Chinese, to start my Chinese journey. Um, they graduated from the language of Spanish language and literature themselves, and my father used to work as a diplomat in South America. My mom is a teacher and interpreter, and her languages are Spanish and German. So my family is very international, right? It's, my, par my parents are great role models for me. And nine years ago, I remember that my dad told me um, a very important thing that is still 
deep in my mind. He told me that if you keep learning this European languages, it's not going to surprise me because all of them are very similar and it's going to be very easy to master them. But if you learn one Eastern language, I will be very proud of you because it's very challenging and none of our family members speak these languages. He told this to me and my sister. So my sister and I started our Chinese language learning in Confucius Institute. My sister and I are twins and we both started Confucius Institute, but I had a, a deeper story with Chinese language. I just realized that I have this very deep connection with the language. I was very passionate about calligraphy, xiangsheng, crosstalk, mm -hmm. about all of the Chinese culture, Chinese outfit, xipao. I have five or six xipao right now. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to my parents and they're very proud of me as well because I can somehow serve as a bridge between China and Belarus. Mm -hmm. uh, so from nine years ago, starting learning Chinese, Five years ago, you came to China to study media and communication, mm -hmm. and now you're going back to China studies. Where do you see yourself in the future uh, from that perspective? Because in high school, my dream was to become a TV journalist, a TV reporter. And I actually made my dream come true. I'm very thankful to China and all the opportunities it provided for me. And during my last year of my studies in Tsinghua, I thought that I would like to make a bigger contribution and I would like maybe to be an official representative for my country in China. I don't know if I will be involved with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or Ministry of Culture or Education, but that's certainly what I would like to become, right? To become an official member to, of these two relations of these two countries. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Enoch. It was really my pleasure to share some of my insights on China-Belarus youth and on China-Belarus experience this year. I'm more than excited. I'm looking forward for the fruitful cooperation of two countries. In